Wu Zetian, the only and most legendary female emperor in Chinese history Part 8. Wu Zetian, in her quest to monitor and suppress opposition from the royal family and ministers, implemented a system where informers were encouraged to come forward. These informers, regardless of their background, were granted immunity from private interrogation by regular officials and provided with state-provided transportation and sustenance. Wu Zetian even personally met with ordinary farmers and citizens who provided information, rewarding them with promotions if their reports aligned with her wishes. This attracted informers from all walks of life, including unsuccessful officials, rogues, and vagrants, who were then given judicial positions and became willing accomplices in Wu Zetian's persecution of political opponents. These individuals, who previously belonged to the lower class and lacked proper education, had no affiliation with the powerful upper-class officials and were solely loyal to Wu Zetian. Wu Zetian displayed a complete disregard for human life, evident in her cruel act of strangling her own daughter. This lack of empathy extended to her relatives as well. She empowered corrupt officials to make false accusations, imprisoning and subjecting royal families and ministers who posed a threat to her to fabricated crimes and heinous forms of torture until they either confessed or succumbed to death while incarcerated. Zhou Xing and Lai Junchen, among the cruelest officials, were particularly infamous for their ruthless interrogation and persecution of prisoners. Lai Junchen, born in 651 and died on June 26, 697, was the most renowned and brutal official during the rule of the Wu and Zhou dynasties of the Tang dynasty. Throughout his life, Lai Junchen embodied traits of treachery, immorality, wickedness, and despicability. Since his youth, he lived a nomadic and lawless existence, constantly wandering without any legitimate occupation. Eventually, he was arrested and imprisoned for his crimes. While incarcerated, Lai Junchen developed a habit of fabricating false reports and accusations against individuals he held grudges against. However, despite investigations by prison guards, his claims were consistently baseless. Frustrated, the chief inspector of the state, Wang Su, grew furious and subjected Lai Junchen to severe beatings. Unfortunately, Wang Su was later executed by the court for his own crimes. Lai Junchen was a cunning individual who exploited the situation to his advantage. He concocted a fictional account of exposing Wang Su and enduring severe beatings, shifting blame for his arrest and imprisonment onto the deceased chief inspector. At this pivotal moment, when Wu Zetian was preparing to eliminate royal family members and ministers who opposed her, the emergence of a seemingly insignificant man daring to challenge high-ranking officials piqued her interest. Recognizing an opportunity, Wu Zetian appointed Lai Junchen as a supervisory official in the imperial court, granting him authority to handle cases assigned by her. Lai Junchen proved to be a loyal and astute servant to Wu Zetian, adept at anticipating her desires and meticulously handling each case according to her wishes. With Wu Zetian's favor on his side, Lai Junchen exhibited cruelty and ruthlessness, arresting individuals, regardless of their social standing, who dared to oppose Wu Zetian's will and framing them for treason. This not only resulted in the punishment of the accused, but also implicated their families, sparing no one, regardless of age or innocence. The reign of terror instigated by Lai Junchen and Wu Zetian's regime silenced the civil and military ministers of the Manchu dynasty, instilling fear that prevented anyone from speaking out against the injustice. Lai Junchen documented his experience in creating unjust prisons, encapsulating his methods in a book titled Luo Zijing. It stands as the sole classic in Chinese history dedicated to the creation of unjust prisons. The contents of Luo's hygiene can be summarized as follows. Identify the target in advance. Disseminate informant letters or accusation letters from various sources to manipulate public opinion. Await instructions from relevant authorities or influential figures to forward these letters and initiate investigations. Arrest and interrogate the subject based on the assigned letter. During the interrogation, employ torture to extract confessions, leading the defendant with two options, confess or endure torture until death. Encourage prisoners to implicate each other while confessing, expanding the scope of accusations arbitrarily. Organize and compile the defendant's confession to ensure a seamless and consistent narrative. Lai Junchen asserted that in order to capture everyone's attention, a case must be turned into a sensational spectacle. 
it was not enough to demonstrate the capabilities of a case handler unless a large number of people were involved in the proceedings. This strategy not only ensured the satisfaction of superiors, but also made subordinates feel favored and secure. The revelations found within Lai Zhenshin's Luo Zhijing serve as a stark warning to future generations about the horrors that unfold when power falls into the hands of individuals who lack respect for human life. Another cruel official employed by Wu Zetian was Zhou Xing, who held a different background compared to Lai Junqin, having studied law in his youth and served as the county magistrate of Heian during the reign of Emperor Gaozong of the Tang Dynasty. Despite Zhou Xing's administrative capabilities, his promotion was hindered by the prime ministers due to his failure to pass the imperial examination. This rejection, particularly from Prime Minister Wei Xiantong, instilled a deep hatred within Zhou Xing. In 684, Empress Dowager Wu Zetian seized power, facing resistance from the Li royal family and dissenting ministers. Sensing an opportunity for personal gain, Zhou Xing, who possessed a keen political sense, immediately pledged his loyalty to Wu Zetian and presented his ideas regarding prison management and criminal law. Recognizing Zhou Xing's legal acumen, Wu Zetian swiftly employed him and promoted him to the position of Deputy Minister of Justice. Zhou Xing's specific role was to handle matters concerning the Li royal family and high-ranking ministers. One of Zhou Xing's proposals involved stripping the Li royal family of their surname, a suggestion that received Wu Zetian's approval. Consequently, the Li family lost their royal privileges, becoming more susceptible to arrest and conviction. Soon after, nearly the entirely royal family was wiped out, showcasing the cruel methods employed by Zhou Xing. In 688, Hao Xiangxian, a minor official serving the prince, was unjustly accused of treason by his family servants without any valid reason. Although Hao Xiangxian himself posed no threat to Empress Dowager Wu Zetian, his grandfather, Hao Chujun, had been a prime minister during the reign of Tang Gaozong and had once opposed Wu Zetian's regency when Emperor Tang Gaozong was gravely ill. Holding deep resentment towards Hao Chujun, Wu Zetian directed her animosity towards his grandson, Hao Xiangxian, and tasked Zhou Xing with trying him. Zhou Xing skillfully anticipated Wu Zetian's desires, framed Hao Xiangxian, forged a confession, and subsequently announced the annihilation of the Hao family. In 689, Zhou Xing's attention turned to Prime Minister Wei Xiantong. Believing that Wei Xiantong had hindered his own promotion in earlier years, Zhou Xing accused Wei Xiantong of being an associate of Prime Minister Pei Yan, despite Pei Yan having been executed in 684 for opposing Wu Zetian. Nevertheless, Wu Zetian compelled Wei Xiantong to commit suicide. Wu Zetian's appointment of cruel officials to govern the judiciary effectively silenced any opposition within the court. She tightly grasped power, consolidating her rule, and compelled all civil and military officials of the Manchu dynasty to surrender at her feet. In 690, Wu Zetian proclaimed herself the Emperor of the Holy Spirit and renamed the country Zhou. At the age of 66, she became the first and only female emperor in Chinese history. Emperor Taizong of Tang, Li Shimin, was the greatest ruler after the establishment of the Tang dynasty. He had intentionally sacrificed several elder princes, who were older and more talented, to prevent conflicts over the throne. Instead, he chose the humble prince, Li Ji, who respected his parents, cared for his elder brother, and adhered to principles. Emperor Taizong hoped that his careful arrangements would ensure a harmonious and prosperous future for his descendants. However, he could never have anticipated that his well-intentioned plans not only failed to secure stability for future generations but also nearly led to the annihilation of the Li family and the downfall of the empire. The calamity did not arise from northern invasions or rebellions by local warlords. Instead, it was caused by his neglected wife, Wu Zetian. This aggrieved and vengeful young woman harnessed an immense power, single-handedly overthrowing the entire Tang Empire. Thus, in this world, anything is possible.